In continuing our series on isopod basics, today I thought we should discuss something that is not only tantamount to your success in keeping healthy and happy pods, but critical to their survival. Today, we will be discussing calcium. Now, why is it so important to isopods? And where do they source it naturally? What sources can we offer them in captivity? And which are the best options and why? So come along, let's get to it. integral part of the circle of life and of critical importance in their role as part of a healthy, balanced, natural system. Spending their lives primarily underfoot in the top layers of the forest floor, leaf litter, under rocks and fallen logs. Some species have adapted to live in dark, humid caves. Regardless, Isopods are extremely adaptable creatures and generally fairly easy to care for in captivity. One essential element to isopods and the topic of today's video is calcium. Isopods are anthropods with hard protective segmented cuticles or exoskeletons somewhat meaning unlike us, it's kind of like their skeletons are on the outside. Now calcium is required for the mineralization of their exoskeleton. This hard shell protects terrestrial isopods, or as I aptly call them, land shrimp, from desiccation as they go about their lives on land. Isopods are detritivores, which means that their primary role is that they consume dead organic matter, thereby contributing to the natural process of decomposition and contributing to soil fertility. So where do isopods find calcium in nature? Now calcium, as mentioned, is an essential element and it can be found naturally in soil to varying degrees. It can be found in plants, in calciferous rocks, the bones of higher mammals that have passed away, as well as the shed exoskeletons of other anthropods. Now, isopods store vast amounts of calcium as it is needed for their daily functions, as well as their natural process of molting. When an isopod is about to molt, they migrate the calcium stored within their bodies into epithelial sacs. And once the molting process is complete, they use this stored calcium to harden their new cuticle or exoskeleton. As mentioned prior in the last video, Calcium also plays an integral role in substrate stability. The buildup of organics such as isopod waste products, or aptly known as frass, they acidify the soil layers. So by adding calcium, you can stabilize these environments. No, this does not mean that we just randomly add calcium. As the colony or culture grows, more isopods, more mancae, means more waste. So attention to the entire environment is of equal importance. In captivity, the environments we set up for our isopods will never truly be large enough to really replicate nature in anything more than appearance. It is our role to replenish, remove the required products as needed and control the population so as to do our best to maintain a healthy balance. In captivity, we can provide many forms of calcium to our pods. Some are better than others, but let's take a peek at some of our options. Limestone rocks. These are calciferous rocks. They're heavy. 
that could be dangerous if they were dropped or when they're moved, you could crush some of your beloved little pods. But they do serve their purpose. And this would be a Naplan normal source that they could find readily in nature. Coralline rocks, same as somewhat as above. These are what are often sold in the pet trade as live rock or base rock. This is rock that has come from the ocean that has been all calcified. It's not as readily available and it can be very cost prohibitive as it's generally sold by the pound. Crushed coral, also known as aragonite, is basically a substrate that is sold for use in marine aquariums or saltwater aquariums. It can be very expensive, but it's basically the product above broken down. Crushed oyster shells. These are sold for poultry. For anybody that raises chickens, this is a natural product that you add to their diet so they can consume it to make sure that their eggshells stay nice and hard. It's cheap, it's readily available, but it's very, very messy to work with. There's tons and tons of dust, and all that dust is good for isopods, but it is very, very messy to work with. Now, another one that you may not even consider is natural bones. Yes, I'm not telling you go out on a murder spree by any means, but if you find any natural shed bones, they would be fine. They'd be a natural source for your isopods. They're just not readily available. But one that is, would be something along the lines of dried minnows. They're often used for species like Priscilios, which are a little bit more protein driven. And the nice thing about that is their skeletons are fully intact. So you get a protein and a calcium source in one. Exoskeletons of other anthropods is another source. Now, what does that mean? Lobster, lobster and crab. But truly, lobster dinners can get really, really expensive. Maybe you're not a fan like me, but you could use the discarded shells as a calcium source. Calcium powder, be it from pills, tablets, or any of the ones that are sold in the reptile trade, they can work. However, when they're broken down into that fine, fine powder, it could be very expensive to purchase, and it could also be very, very wasteful. Dolomitic lime is one that I've readily used and it's readily available to anyone. It's available at any garden center or home supply. It's cheap and it's good for stabilizing, it's sold for stabilizing the chemistry of soil. So there's another benefit. Calcium carbonate, which is a, a, a substrate that's often used for reptiles. It's a readily available calcium source. It's readily available at any pet store that deals with reptiles. And it's one of my favorites because it, as I've mentioned before, it provides a visual cue within the substrate. One that we probably use the most at our place would be eggshells. As we have a farm, we have lots of eggshells available to us, so they're readily available and they're actually free. Not because we raise chickens, but because if you buy a dozen eggs, you're not gonna eat the eggshells and they would usually be discarded, so it's free. Great source. And probably one that most people know would be cuddle bone. Now this one is one of the best for assimilation. We'll talk about that in a moment. It's extremely visual, so it's easy to see when it needs replacing. As well, many of the quality prepared diets you guys seen me endorse Wally Kern's Supreme Gecko Isopod Chow. Now he's got two different formulas or any of the type of Rapashi or similar gel-based diets. A lot of them that are formulated for use for isopods are already calcium fortified. Now items that are easier to assimilate. This is how the animal uses the product. Items that are easier to assimilate are softer. So therefore they get used up far faster and they need to be monitored more frequently. So think of like something like a cuddle bone, which is soft, versus a piece of limestone, which is a hard rock. This is why I tend to utilize a mix of calcium sources in all my containers to ensure that calcium is readily available to all the isopods in my care. Now, I hope this video has been helpful to you, my friends. And at very least, it's given you a better understanding as to why calcium plays such a critical role in all of poddom. Thank you kindly for watching. Please like, comment, and share. And if you wish to support me further, 
please consider becoming a member of the channel. Till next time, take care.